Step aside, Dream SMP. Today we're taking a deep dive into the oldest Minecraft SMP on YouTube, Hermitcraft. Why now? Well, after about 10 years of epic adventures, a big reveal is about to happen. One that has its roots in the series' origins from over a decade ago. Someone is currently in the villain's crosshairs, and that person is... me? Wait, really? Yeah, I am just as surprised and confused as you are. Hello Internet! Welcome to Game Theory, the show that, as usual, is joining the party 10 years too late. That's still fashionably late though, right? That, that still qualifies? But hey, here's the good news, at least you can stop yourself from being late to watching our videos by tapping that red subscribe button. I hear that if you spam the subscribe button fast enough, it actually breaks apart and gets added into your inventory. It's this new YouTube feature for any videos that have Minecraft in the tags. Go ahead, try it, see if it works. No? Uh, I guess it's still in beta. So, Hermitcraft. For those of you who don't know, Hermitcraft is a Minecraft SMP, or survival multiplayer server filled with creators that call themselves, fittingly enough, the Hermits. And this thing isn't just any SMP. Hermitcraft has actually been around for a long time, starting all the way back in 2012, which makes it one of, if not the, longest running SMP still on YouTube. Don't quote me on that one, and apologies to anyone if I missed you. Is Minecraft still doing things? Anyway, the difference between Hermitcraft and something like the Dream SMP is that there really isn't a storyline here. The server gets reset every one to two years, and with that reset, all the improvised stories and alliances get Thanos snapped away. And the storylines that do tend to occur aren't planned out or scripted, they just kind of happen naturally. For instance, in Season 6, there was a server-wide civil war, but it wasn't because of some tyrannical dictator or some political coup. Instead, it was because someone changed a sign to blame an innocent person for a prank. The season after that was a massive turf war, simply because someone changed a couple of grass blocks to mycelium. Real earth-shattering stuff, you know? And honestly, that's one of the reasons I've never been able to do a theory on it. Because this whole thing was just casual fun, without the need to script out elaborate interconnected lore. Nothing wrong with that. You play a game for fun, and you just make up improvised storylines. Good for you. Enter Season 8. I don't know if it's the influence of the smash hit that is the Dream SMP, or just the creative whims of the creators involved, but Season 8 has flipped the script, complete with animated cutscenes and easter eggs everywhere. Suddenly, story matters a lot, and it all centers around one hermit in particular, the server's admin, Isuma Void. In this, one of the longest-running SMPs, Isuma is one of the longest-running hermits, though his outfits have changed a lot over the years, first appearing as Doom Guy, but then shifting over to Turtles, Bees, and Axolotls as those mobs were introduced to the game. Anyway, Isuma's Season 8 starts pretty normally, gathering resources, getting a lay of the land, developing a farm of upside-down cows and chickens, you know, all the usual minecraft -y things. But everything changes in episode 6. Or, should I say, Asuma's video number 1006, which, gotta say, mad respect for that many videos. Kind of makes me wonder how many theories I've done at this point. <laughs> 795 across the channels. Man, that is, honestly, I don't even have a joke about that. That's just a reality check, man. That's a lot. That's not even including the 900 GT Live videos that exist. Ooh, I need to get myself a hobby. Anyway, at the start of this episode, we get our first major cutscene. The return of Azuma's evil counterpart, Evil X. I am back. I have returned from my slumber. The Hermitcraft server can't keep me away. Now, this alone is pretty darn interesting. You see, Evil X has always had a goal of destroying destroying the server by spawning dozens of henchmen to destroy everything. And up until now, Evil X has been largely used to cause mischief that otherwise wouldn't fit into the style of Azuma's usual videos. He's kind of like the Minecraft equivalent of anti Septicai or Dark Applier. And the last time we saw him, video 800, he was just banned from the server. Except now, he's back. And not only is he back for this one installment, but he is back in every episode of Season 8. And his objective this time around is actually very different from what he's used to. He no longer wants to destroy instead we are not here to destroy anything at all i want to become the richest hermit the hermitcraft server has ever seen so his goal is capitalism why the sudden change why this big return and why would i care about any of this well all of those answers i believe actually goes way back to season one you see back in season one a character named pungence opened up a shop where he was selling golden items but not just any golden items these were the cursed golden items of the 
real-life Greek mythological figure King Midas. For those of you who don't know, since King Midas doesn't really appear in the game Hades, so why would you know that part of Greek mythology, his story goes a little something like this. King Midas was this super wealthy guy who was obsessed with gold. One day, he does a favor for the god of wine Dionysus, who thanks him by granting Midas one wish. The king wishes that everything he touched turned to gold. Dionysus is like, you sure, bro? And Midas is like, what could possibly go wrong? The next day, Midas quickly learns what could possibly go wrong when he accidentally turns his food, drinks, and even his daughter to solid gold. Midas is sad. Dionysus is like, you dumb. Gets Midas to bathe in a river to reverse his wish, and Midas becomes really generous to the people of his kingdom. It is a great little story about how greed can blind us, and how having all the earthly riches we desire could actually be a curse. Also, just a good story about thinking about your damn wishes before you make them. Anyway, back in Hermitcraft, pungence is aware of the story, but unaware that the gold items are apparently cursed. Ultimately, a shadowy character with glowing eyes from H-E double hockey sticks named Jeff the Minion takes the chance to fill pungence in, saying that holding onto these items will cause pungence to become incredibly greedy. He offers pungence a chance to save his soul by throwing the items into the same river that Midas washed his hands in to remove the curse. Pungence ignores the warning, immediately jacks up all the prices in a shop, and, well, the story never really gets a conclusion. Nothing comes of it. Pungence goes on as normal and eventually leaves the server. Jeff the Minion is never seen or heard from again for the hundreds and hundreds of Hermitcraft episodes that come after until now. You see, now, all of a sudden in Season 8, the mysterious Jeff has begun to reappear out of nowhere, and not in any sort of obvious way, either. Notice this shady figure with glowing green eyes in the background of a suit cutscene from episode 1019. Or how about here in the Hell's Kitchen episode of 1021? A familiar face that has only ever belonged to one character on the server, Jeff the Minion. He just keeps lurking. A mysterious figure in the periphery. His return would actually explain why Evil X has become obsessed with money. Evil X is infected by the Midas curse. And wherever that curse is, Jeff is along for the ride. Waiting. Waiting for what though? Like what is Jeff the Minion's plan in all this? Why is he connected to this supposed Midas curse. Why is he back now, after nearly a decade of stories in between? Well, we learned from Jeff way back in Season 1 that he too was cursed by Dionysus after losing a bet with him, turning him from the all-powerful hellspawn that he was into a minion. <laughs> where Jeff's story would end. However, by digging deeper, we can deduce more. In a video titled Hermitcraft Dream No More, also known as Hermitcraft Carnival 2, Pungence attacks Jeff the Minion using King Midas's golden butter knife, which allows Jeff to suddenly regain all of his hellspawn powers before he eventually gets brought down by the hermits. This, though, reveals to us an important point. In true mythological fashion, Jeff needs items cursed by Dionysus in order to restore his power. That's why he tends to linger around whenever the curse of Midas crops up. It all seems to fit. There's just one problem though. That video, Dream No More, isn't actually from Hermitcraft. It's actually fan-made. This would normally be where I have to throw the whole theory out and accept defeat, because fan creations just aren't canon to the main series. But this time, there's a twist. Sure, it wasn't canon when it was first created, but thanks to Season 8 of Hermitcraft, I think now it is. I think retroactively, it's been made canon. Look at this. In Hermitcraft Carnival 3, the end of this fan series, there's a big showdown against Jeff the Minion, and in it, Asuma shoots an arrow into Jeff's eye, causing a red scar to form underneath. Now, take a closer look at Jeff hiding in the background of Asuma's canon Season 8 story. Notice anything familiar? The scar is still there. A scar that wasn't present in any of his original character models from the canonical entries in Season 1. It only appeared as a result of that fan video. In other words, this detail allows us to confirm that Carney 
Carnival is, in fact, canon. One more wrinkle, though. At the end of Carnival 3, the Hermits, along with many other YouTubers, including me, apparently, defeat Jeff. So how, then, is Jeff showing back up in Hermitcraft Season 8, and what's his connection to Evil X's turn to capitalism? Well, the Puka, fan creator of the Carnival series, also has another animation, this time focusing on Evil X called Evil's Fault. And we can once again show strong evidence that this, too, is canon. As it's made by the same creator, it recounts the story of Carnival, and Jeff the Minion is seen with the same scar. But the big kicker is this line in the canonical Season 8, Episode 1010, where Evil X says this. Jeff the Minion. Oh, I haven't seen that guy in some time. Given the fact that Evil X has only ever met Jeff the Minion during the Carn Evil and Evil's Fault videos, we can infer that Puka's creations are, in fact, part of the approved Season 8 story. So what then happens in Evil's Fault that we have to pay attention to? Well, it's revealed that the voice that's been guiding Evil X's actions actually belongs to Jeff the Minion. Having a bad dream, even if you wake up, I'll still be here. Upon waking, nightmares don't go away. We wait. And wait he did, considering the subtle clues that we're starting to see throughout Season 8. Notice in Episode 1013 how Evil X's eyes glow in the window. Those don't match Evil X's eyes, but they definitely look a whole lot like Jeff's. And what about over here? When Evil X is talking about using compassion and kindness, he suddenly has an emotional shift, and he starts talking about how to manipulate the hermits. When that shift occurs, his eyes start to glow, similar to the way they glow when Jeff the Minion puts his voice in Evil X's head at the start of Evil's Fall. So we have ourselves an evil hellspawn that's literally possessing the mind of another villainous hermitcraft character in the form of Evil X. Hold up, why does this sound familiar? Oh my god, he's pulling an Afton, right? <sighs> Again? It's another one of those, I'm taking over his mind. Uh, fine, okay, so Jeff the Minion is Glitch Trap and Evil X is Vanny, basically. Why would Glitch Trap, <laughs> I mean, Jeff the Minion want to do this? Well, for revenge. At the end of Carnival 3, Jeff the Minion is defeated by all the hermits working together, so he, of course, Horse wants revenge, and he's using Evil X to get it. I control your every waking thought. You will destroy the hermits, including your precious Zoomavoid. However, if he let Evil X go in guns blazing like he usually does, then he'd inevitably get himself banned again. So Jeff the Minion needed to manipulate Evil X into taking a different approach. A subtle approach that wouldn't arouse suspicion. Capitalism. And that's not all. By making Evil X obsessed with collecting diamonds and running a market empire, it allows Jeff, in the form of Evil X, to control the flow of items. The Hermits will only be able to get what Evil X allows them to get. And if Evil X has all the diamonds, they're not going to be able to defend themselves when Jeff the Minion finally reveals himself. It also allows Jeff to form alliances with certain hermits, notably the hermits that weren't part of the original assault against him in Carnivals 1 and 2. These hermits, Wells Knight, Ijevan, and Vintage Beef, have all been influenced by Evil X throughout Season 8, making them susceptible to his demands. This, in turn, means that Jeff is assembling an army to defend him when the time is right, or is potentially prepping bodies to swap into once Evil X has served his purpose. And that purpose is mind control. Remember, Jeff the Minion has that red scar under his eye because because of Izuma, Evil X's good version. The last time Jeff rose to power, it was stolen away by three main characters, Generic B, the Puka, and Izuma. Generic B left the server after season one, the Puka has never been an official hermit, so Izuma is the only one left for Jeff to target. And we've seen a couple times this season that Evil X has been able to use their shared connection to mind control him. Don't even think about it. The Striders are doing just fine. Yes, yes they are. Mm. Yes, yes, relax. All is good, my foolish axolotl. My guess is that Jeff is just biding his time, looking for the golden item that he needs to rise to power once again, all to get his revenge against the hermit who dared to defy him last time. And what's Jeff gonna do once he's regained those powers? Obviously, he's gonna try to destroy the Hermitcraft server, but according to the lore of Carnival 3, he also has other plans. Escape. As in, leave the confines of the game. Ho hold on, he, he really is pulling an aft in here. He's looking to leave the confines of the game, possess a human body, okay. Yeah, sure. Fire off the Afton alarm! I always come back. I always come back. According to the various sources of Jeff the Minion lore, when he originally lost his physical form, Jeff apparently experimented with traveling to different worlds. Although he didn't find a way to escape the confines of the game, he did find someone of influence that would be of great use to him should he ever regain his powers. Want to guess who it is that Jeff wants to take control over? He says it's someone with massive influence. Mr. Beast, maybe? Markiplier? Tommy in it? Well, ladies and gentlemen, 
gentlemen, it turns out that the person Jeff is really after is me. In the description for the Carnival 3 video is a link to a Google spreadsheet that tells us everyone that was involved in defeating Jeff for the final battle. It's mainly just a list of names and links to their YouTube channels, but some of them have little notes next to them. And if you find my name, you'll see this quote. While Jeff was incorporeal, he experimented with escaping his prison by traveling to different worlds. He didn't find an escape, but he did find one that interested him for future plans. Wow, I, uh, I, I don't know what to say to that. I'm honored that you want to possess my body? I guess, you know what? Consider this your open invite, Jeff the Minion. I'm ready for you. Seriously, my brain is all yours. Please, steal my body. Got a really long to-do list, so either you're gonna do it for me and I get to save on a lot of headaches, or I just have the best excuse to miss a bunch of deadlines. Sorry guys, my body became possessed by a cuboidal hell spawn. How was your weekend? But hey, even if Jeff doesn't come to possess me, I'm sure I'll be able to keep myself entertained while I tackle that boring to-do list thanks to today's sponsor, Audible.com. For those of you who don't already know, Audible is the leading provider in spoken word entertainment. So if building massive monuments in Minecraft is starting to get a little bit stale, why not listen to the miner's redstone on Audible, which will give you all sorts of ideas on how to spice up your projects with some cool redstone-powered contraptions. And if you're not into the tech side of the game, don't worry. There's also a massive selection of story-driven Minecraft audiobooks for you to enjoy while you design your latest creation. I personally really liked The Island, which was voiced by Jack Black. A crossover of Minecraft and Jack Black is uh, not something that I ever thought I needed in my life, but it's definitely something that I enjoyed. I'm currently listening my way through all those Minecraft audio novels because, you know, half the fun of playing video games in 2021 is listening to their audiobook spin-offs that might be filled with secret hidden lore. And the best part? You can listen to all of it for free with Audible's 30-day trial. Just visit audible.com slash matpat, M-A-T-P-A-T, or you can text matpat, M-A-T-P-A-T, to 500-500. And if Minecraft isn't really your thing, don't worry about it. Audible has thousands of audiobooks and podcasts about pretty much any subject, like how to start and grow your business. Not quite an evil empire, but hey, gotta start somewhere. Come to think of it, Evil X probably would benefit from getting in on that action. Audible even has tons of audiobooks on positive thinking. Would probably have helped him with the whole Jeff trying to control his mind thing. So if you don't want Jeff's ever-present voice inside your head, I suggest you sign up and grab yourself some great audio experiences to keep your mind and ears distracted and entertained. That's audible.com slash matpat or text matpat, M-A-T-P-A-T, to 500-500. And as always, remember, it's all just a theory. A game theory! Thanks for watching.